the party officially returns. It's more of Just Jenny and you. Give her a call at 888-947-8277 to get in the queue now. All right, let me welcome to the show Dr. Allison Ocean and Cindy Price Gavin. Uh, Both are here to talk about Let's Win, which is uh, an organization to support their research of um, for for pancreatic cancer. And and of course, November is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. And coming up, November nineteenth, Let's Win is going to have a virtual event, and we're going to get into where people can read about this, can be a part of this virtual event where they can read about it and and be a part of it. But starting off, Dr. Ocean, you're an oncologist at Wild Cornell Medicine. Um, You're a researcher, you're a patient advocate. And so I I don't think I've ever asked you, and we've been friends a while now, um, why did you want to become an oncologist? What, What was it about this field of medicine, which is, I mean, you have some great wins and everything, but it's it can be incredibly devastating. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying. I, I got into it because I love science and I also love biology. And I'm, I don't know if you know, I think you know this, Jenny, I'm an identical twin. And so genetics have always been, genetics have always been, you know, very important to me. And the, the discipline of oncology is all about genetics, about science, about biology. And that's why I think I got, got into it. Also, when cancer affects someone, it affects every organ system. So it's not just mm-hmm. the GI tract. It's not just the heart or the lungs or the liver, or, et cetera. So I wanted to focus on a specialty that actually involved all the organ systems rather than just one specialty like a pulmonologist or yeah. a nephrologist. But how do you manage, I would, I would think, the emotion uh, or the emotional turmoil that comes with being in a field of medicine that's guaranteed to have you endure loss? What keeps me going is that we are helping people Mm -hmm. no matter what. And Mm -hmm. even if we can't have someone ultimately survive their disease, we are helping them make the journey easier. There are, there's always treatment for someone and, and it doesn't always mean chemo, but there's always treatment for someone. And as an oncologist, I develop very close relationships with my patients. I, I get a lot from that. I, um, I want to, um, make sure that they're going through the cancer journey in the best way possible. And through my advocacy, advocacy work, I also try to give back in a different way than, than day-to-day oncology care. And uh, that's why I got so involved with, with this work. And then you also, I know you're, you're, we're going to talk, let's win, uh, let's win, um, PC. And by the way, you can follow let's win PC at let's win PC everywhere, uh, and go to let's win PC.org. But you also have your other charity that you've been doing, I think with your sister, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now that that's just, um, started recently. And we, we both love, um, beauty products and, and, um, clean beauty products. And so we started something called oceans of blessings, where we're gifting uh, clean beauty and skincare products to patients undergoing chemotherapy so so that they can, um, you know, use products that are good for their skin to mitigate the side effects of chemotherapy. Yeah. I love that. I think it's really, (laughs) it's really nice. Um, Cindy Price Gavin, how do you get involved with, I mean, A, how do you get involved with this, these, these cancer organizations, but the fact that you've run so many marathons, I don't even know how to even talk to you because like, they, <laughs> like I have a lot of goals in my life except to run a marathon. Like I, it's just not, never going to do it. Don't want to, couldn't hack it, no interest, but I'm fascinated by people who can. Um, so right there, you're amazing. But uh, what made you want to be involved in these cancer research or just sort of cancer foundations? And, and let's win PC. Pancreatic cancer we know is so deadly, uh, so traumatic. I mean, I know because I lost my mother to pancreatic cancer. But uh, what made you get involved in all of this? So for me, cancer doesn't discriminate. 
um, and they're all bad. My grandmother um, had four cancers starting from the time my mom was four years old. Mm. And I always say that I could probably say the word cancer before I could walk. Um, so that's actually how I got involved in marathon running. Cause I always had a dream of running up first Avenue in the New York city marathon. And I wanted to do it for an important cause. So back then, 20 years ago, there weren't a lot of opportunities to do an endurance event for a cancer charity. So I joined team in training, which is, uh, the leukemia and lymphoma society's blood cancer charity. Um, and I was off and running. And I got addicted. So I did my 10 marathons for a team in training. Um, when Allison, so about 10 years ago, I decided to go from a for-profit career. Uh, I, was, I was previously a partner at Price Waterhouse Coopers, but my heart was yep. always in the cancer space. Yep. So I was introduced to Allison. We worked together on Michael's mission. And then she, Allison asked me, to help what I called her project, to get her project off the ground, which five years later is Let's Win. Um, when Allison approached me and she said, I'm working with a patient, this amazing patient, she has a vision to help create an online pre unprecedented platform is what they mm -hmm. called it, to get mm -hmm. um, information about science and pancreatic cancer online every three days. I thought these women were crazy. Jenny, I said, how is there going to be enough science that we're going to have a program? I said, Allison, I love you. I will do pretty much anything for you. So I, you know, joined her project. I will say that, you know, Let's Win was built to help people navigate a journey with pancreatic cancer. And we, there's no lack of content. There's so much research happening in, in pancreatic cancer that yeah. we... We can produce articles every three days easily, helping patients navigate a difficult journey, connecting patients, doctors, and researchers with the best treatment options available. Yeah, because uh, it's still just this this wild puzzle. How are how are they doing in terms of finding early detection testing? Are they are they making improvements? Because isn't that sort of one of the one of the ways with this, this lethal disease that you can uh, that you can get greater survival rates and maybe even sometimes a cure when when it's detected early. So that's really a, a key focus of of research. Um, surveillance and screening, as we know, in cancers like breast cancer or colorectal cancer, the the, the sur surveillance has made an incredible impact on survivorship. Yes. So much of the area, and Allison can talk um, specifically, but much of the area that that, pe that is being focused on is early detection, biomarkers, blood tests, and hopefully yeah. the, um, the screening is 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 on its way. But we definitely have a ways to go. Al? Yeah, Doctor Ocean, where are yeah, we with so that? Because we, we know we can we're have actually a, closer yeah. than we have ever been. There in studies now is a test called Cancer Seek, which was developed uh, through researchers at the Lust Garten Foundation in collaboration with researchers at Johns Hopkins. Yeah. And also I think Stand Up to Cancer is involved in this. And they it is a blood test, not just for pancreatic cancer, but for I think eight other cancers where oh my they're de detecting cancer genetic material, DNA in the bloodstream. And trying to validate this test as a early screening test. So you would go to your doctor, you would give a blood test. It usually, right now, there people who are giving the blood samples are people who are known to be at higher risk because they have yep. a family history. Yep. Uh, but you would go to the doctor, give a blood test. They would, they would do this, this assay and they would come back and tell you that you have or most likely have cancer. And then you go to further work up to prove that this assay really did detect the cancer. Oh my gosh. You know, Jenny, the other thing I would add is that um, genetic testing now is becoming, uh, it, it actually is, uh, Allison, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, uh, you know, everyone is able to get genetic testing when they're yes. diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, yes. which really helps familial history and helps families navigate 
Um, and things like the BRCA, the BRCA mutation, you know, um, there's many, many targeted therapies when you're dealing with more of a known. So yes. that also has been really helpful in, you know, precision, what we call targeted or precision medicine and helping yeah. families longer term. When you talk about the genetic testing, uh, it, it's very strange because I know that our genetics are our genetics. We have our code, we have our DNA tested today. It's going to be the same results essentially as if you tested tomorrow, except like when I was genetic tested seven or eight years ago, and then again, five years later, there were different, um, different reporting mechanisms used, different explanations given. I mean, all fine and everything, but different variants were caused, were called different things. So how Mm -hmm. often do we have to have our genetics reassessed? So that, that does happen where someone would get a genetic test years ago. And because we have so much more knowledge about what these mutations and what these alleles and these changes in these alleles or genes mean, they sometimes reclassify the information the more they collect of it. So that over many, many years, they've collected so many more samples. So they, so uh, a variant that, that before they may have called insignificant now may be significant because it's, it's coming up in many more people. And so that's why the reports sometimes change over time for the most part, you only need genetic testing once. They act, the companies that do the testing will actually reach out to the patient who gives the blood test if they have a new development or if they reclassify the gene or if they want to get a repeat test on the patient. They will reach out to them about it. Okay. So they stay on top of it. That's one of the things yes. that they do. Are there, when people who uh, want to look into, genetic testing, are there certain companies that are reputable? I was told I used color before I'd done my first one through the hospital years and years ago, but it was so early on. I feel like it was almost crude the way it was all, the way it was all (laughs) done, not as sort of neatly packaged as these companies do. So, but I feel like people do 23andMe or they do ones that they can just sign up for, but what are the ones through medical offices that are are best to look, look for? Uh, there are many companies that have uh, very um, validated platforms that, that do genetic testing. Color is one of them. Yep. Ambry Gen- Genetics is one. Foundation one. Um, Garden 360, Invitae. Um, okay. Caris. They're all really good platforms. Okay. Uh, and, and, you know, some some geneticists tend to use ones ver- over the other just – I think it's a matter of habit more than anything else. But the um, the key to all of this is that someone who goes through genetic testing has to meet with a genetic counselor to okay. review the results because yes. they don't know what the results mean. And they don't want we don't want people to be worried, uh, if you know, and live live in fear if they don't have to. And then we also want to make sure that people know about inherited risk so that we can guide them through the genetic counselors. We can guide them to the doctors that would necessarily uh, screen these patients for the development of cancer. So, okay. so it's really, really important to participate. And I think get genetic testing, not through 23andMe because it's just, you don't, you don't get the, the physician contact that you need right. and the genetic counselor contact that you need. Right. And the depth of information, I don't think you get either. Yeah, um, it's a cursory uh, analysis. It's it's yes. um, it's interesting, and it and some people it's some people enjoy finding out about their heritage, etc. But I if if it's related to cancer and and the risk of cancer therapy, yeah. then I uh, yeah. development, then I think that you you should do it through a genetic counselor or through a physician. And, okay. And just a plug, Jenny, yeah. for those at higher risk, there yeah. are high risk studies that are, you know ha- happen around the country, and anyone at a higher risk for pancreatic cancer should mm-hmm. absolutely be enrolled. So okay. that's just important to know. Right. 
Right. And higher risk is defined. You have to check with your doctor because there's all different determined. It's not just a family member that's had it. There's other, Correct. there's other things yes. that are involved. Yeah. I know way too much about this stuff, but what, so be it. Uh, so let's talk about the event. Let's talk about the event on November 19th. It's a virtual event, which means that anybody can participate. Uh, they can go to let's win PC.org and at let's win on social media handles. But Cindy, Tell me about the event so people can involve themselves. Sure. Um, so we did have to pivot uh, our event to a virtual event. Right. Um, and the good news, you know, the greatest thing is, is that people from around the world can be part of it and yes. we will be live streamed. Uh, the event is honoring, um, it's it's actually honoring uh, the life of the beautiful life of Jacqueline Hope Greenstein okay. and honoring Steve Price. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Thursday evening, November 19th at 7 p.m. Um, it's going to be, you know, no more than an hour. It's going to be a beautiful night celebrating the importance of family and friends. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't think of a time that that is more important um, than, than now. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're going to raise awareness about Let's Win. We're going to raise awareness about pancreatic cancer. And we're going to raise money for this great cause. Yeah, and we just also lost Alex Trebek, a national treasure, uh, also to pancreatic cancer. So um, it's been it's been quite a year uh, between Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, uh, Don Lewis, and Alex right. Trebek. Mm -hmm. That's right. All but but in such but, a short period of time. But didn't Ruth Bader Ginsburg live a long time for somebody with pancreatic cancer? Right? How many years did she live? Six years? Five years? She did. Yes, yeah, I think it was initially. Uh, detected early because they were screening her for a colon cancer that she had had. So they were able to pick it up early because she was getting scans for colon cancer. And then initially it was detected early and then many years later uh, returned and, and ultimately took her life. But um, yes, so it's, she did have it for a long time. Yes. Yeah. And living proof unusual. that, you know, treatment options can better treatment options really can make a difference in extending lives. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So let's win uh, pc.org, let's win pc.org. If they go to the website, there's a way to sign up for the virtual event so they can be, uh, you can end up in a Zoom room, I guess. You guys are doing some sort of Zoom room type thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And there's a live yeah. stream for anyone to be part of it. Oh, I love that. That's great. So you could just watch it. You could just watch yes. it. Yes, it's, you know, it's for everybody. Yeah, 7 p.m. Eastern time, we want to tell because it's a world event. Yeah. So 7 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, November 19th. And I also want to say that if you follow Let's Win on social media, I've seen, Dr. Ocean, that you have interviews with researchers and uh, all sorts of information that the organization gives out so people can be more aware of risks and um, ways to, to get st tested and sort of what advancements are being made in the treatment and care and push for a cure. So thank you both. It's really important stuff. Thanks, Jenny. And thank you so much, Jenny, for r raising awareness once again. Oh, my God, of course. You're at doctor.allison.ocean on social media, on, on Instagram, and on yep. – I think your Instagram's mm -hmm. private, but your Twitter's public, Dr. Allison That's Ocean. right. <laughs> okay, so people can follow you on Twitter. And Cindy, do you do social media or not really? You're just pan you're just uh, Let's Win PC. I'm Let's Win. Okay, great. <laughs> so follow Let's Win PC uh, across social media platforms and go to letswinpc.org. Thank you for being on my show. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. All right. Enjoy your Friday. Quick break, you guys. I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Don't go away. There's another hour of Just Jenny. Follow her at Jenny Hutt.